Enshrouded is an open world survival game where you build, craft, and fight monsters. We explore this open world wielding the ancient power of the flame as we discover new places, magic, equipment, enemies, and allies. Join me on my 100 day journey in Embervale. So let's begin. Wow, it seems I have woken up in a... a jar? <laughs> a giant jar. I interacted with this fire to commune with the flame. You slumber for too long, flameborn. The realm of the Ember Veil has fallen, consumed by the shroud. Now, enduring flame calls for you. Find a place in the ruined world and construct a flame altar to create shelter from the dark. Okay. We have a flame altar. So bright! Ah, that's why I don't go outside. So the quest was leading me somewhere north. But as you can see, I would fall if ever I went. So I headed over to this mine I discovered and I grabbed myself a torch. Each part of the game basically teaches you what to do. So yeah, I grabbed some explosives on the shelves here as the tutorial told me to. And I threw them on this rubble. And I broke some rocks and was now able to go through this. Well, not yet. Let me throw one more. So yeah, I was able to go through and there we got a chest and inside this chest would be a hatchet our very first weapon I'm not sure why it was shaking maybe the bomb this game has something called the shroud these are the mists you look and when you go to the shroud you'll be enshrouded that's the name of the game <laughs> so yeah you'll be enshrouded and you have a timer on top where it tells you how many minutes do you have left before you die basically if you are fully enshrouded you're dead to the game so yeah this is our very first combat in the game they're pretty easy since we're also level one and they don't have our gaming skills we're we're gone we're escaped we're free i keep getting distracted and i went to this ruined area called the long keep and I didn't expect what happened next when I came here. <laughs> I <was in> here. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't notice the red. <laughs> Scared the heck out of me. I swear to god, this game has a lot of elements of jump scare. I don't know, maybe I was just blind entering houses like this. But there are so many enemies that surprise you like they're assassin yeah, after all that shenanigan i went to the area where the quest told me to go to and made myself a altar of fire actually never mind i don't have rocks let's get some rocks first now we have a flame altar Ooh, fancy i crafted a bunch of stuff from my crafting window i made myself a shield a construction hammer and a campfire I went ahead and chopped some wood with an overly exaggerated slashing attacks. Even though I'm just chopping wood. But yeah, I needed the materials to build some stations like the crafting table and such. But yeah, I got bored of it really fast. So I went ahead and explored Longkeep as I was very eager. And I managed to fetch myself some water in this very old well. It says water is a great way to rejuvenate ourselves and this water actually gives me some HP and maximum stamina which was great. So I grabbed a bunch of water. I didn't really notice but Longkeep was actually a tutorial ground as well. There was a bunch of stuff like food lying around and it taught you how to interact with it and how to cook food. So basically you hold your food over the fire and wait for it to cook but do not overcook it or it will turn into charcoal <laughs> like this i i wasn't paying attention so it became charcoal so yeah uh well after that random adventure i went back home crafted myself a working bench and check out what i could craft and i was very happy to see there was a storage finally can store something my inventory has been slowly getting full there's also a glider and grappling hook in this game that's pretty cool Afterwards, I explored a bit and was attracted to this blue light like a, like a fly. <laughs> so yeah, I went here and saw a monster starting there. He looked pretty slow so I was sure I can take care of him. 
I found this magic wand that long keep and look, I'm a wizard. I kept kiting enemies with my magic wand. They were really having trouble. Oh my god, they hurt so much. But yeah, they had a hard time keeping up with me. But that's not true actually. Look at him, that spear stab. I'm almost dead. He can almost two shot me. That's crazy. But anyways, yeah, the magic wand is... I like the magic wand. I was thinking of going to a mage path actually. I returned home and since I had some materials to make a rag shirt, I finally have clothes. Look at me, I'm not naked anymore. But yeah, as the defense was not that great and I looked like human Shrek. Still, it was clothing, let's go. Right, right. I also made myself a bow and arrow so I can catch those rabbits or other animals that run out, runs away whenever I get close. I went and explored the Braylon Bridge. I wanted to cross over but it was broken. I had to get to the other side from below which there was some mist from I don't know how, how to call this. The shroud? Okay, there was a miss from the shroud. But thankfully, there's still a game guide here. So it's telling us where to go currently. And yeah, the enemies were no problem here. I just killed them easily with my magic wand. And so got a ring. It gave like 8 stamina and 10 health. On the shrouded areas, if you may notice, there are these hourglass they basically restore the bar on top so you can explore the shrouded area more and after reaching uh the area where the quest is taking me i made a flame of altar just in case so i can teleport back here if ever i died basically placing a flame altar will enable you to travel instantly to the area where you have a flame altar oh, i'm a ninja Oh, never mind. I'm not ninja. Oh, <laughs> I'm Harry Potter. Effective. Ooh, an anvil. Dang. Can I take this? I actually didn't know that interacting with just the workbench would repair all your gears. So I was thinking that this anvil was a very important structure in this game and I couldn't take it back home. So yeah, now proceeding to our main objective. Let's go get the blacksmith. There was one more guard and this blacksmith. So I usually took him down with my arrows and then my wand. So yeah, I awakened the survivor. It was Oswald the blacksmith. I have unlocked the recipe for a summoning staff. And with this summoning staff, I could summon Oswald. And he had a lot of things he can craft for us. So I didn't think they would use NPCs like this. So yeah, just interacting with Aswald, you can open the crafting menu on what he's able to craft. Oh, he's the... Oh, we now had access to crafting a fur armor set. It's going to be our next goal as we needed good armor. So yeah, I did a bit more exploring, killing wolves, animals to get their fur so I can make the armor set. I also went around plundering area with shroud, thinking I could get like rare items. I found some decent items, but not really rare. But still, yeah. And since we could fast travel, I decided to relocate my main base to the other base I decided to put my altar on. It had the anvil, which I thought was a great item. It's good, but it works like the same as the workbench, so it's not really anything special. So I was moving my base to, the, to that area because the beginner base didn't really have that much to offer. And there's also already a waypoint here. So it was a good choice of mine to move there. But it wasn't actually a good choice. But still, it's a better base than what we have currently. And after moving my base and gathering all materials, I finally was able to craft the full fur set. And now I look... Haha, uh -huh, look, we have a new armor set. You look like 
still bad i eventually stumbled upon this area which i can't go through basically i was being gate kept until i get a grappling hook so that was something to work on so we can progress through the game oh and i found this flint mine in a shrouded area neat the flints are gonna be useful for making arrows and i'm not sure what else we can use the flint with we'll see so i mined a bit of flint just in case we might need them i made myself a charcoal killin and how it works is basically you just drop the stuff it needs and it would make the charcoal currently needs a uh, dirt and uh, wood logs while i was exploring i noticed that the other side of balin bridge had some scavengers so i dealt with them quickly and tried going to the other side i think hook here so you can pass through the shroud instead where <laughs> I gathered some shroud wood in the shroud as I needed them to make a grappling hook. And as I progressed deeper in the shroud, I actually didn't notice that my shroud meter was going down. And I tried running very fast to go outside the shroud. I only had a few seconds left and I was a very close I died. I got consumed by the shroud. I went back to pick up my body and then went again to the area I last left. It was the elixir well. And I felt like there was something here that needed to be explored. So there was an exclamation point actually. That's telling me uh, this was an important area. I didn't really notice my quest. But yeah, my quest was to be here. Underneath this well... There was actually a cave inside and inside was a very large red root like I don't know how to explain this tentacles or plants. So I fought this boss guarding this area and he does a very strong damage and with my stamina bar being really low I had a hard time dodging this guy. It was honestly going well until I did not notice I press a hotbar and I was in a panic state where I pressed the wrong buttons and such and he dealt like a really massive shockwave damage and now as I was healing with my bandage I just didn't have the stamina to outrun this guy so this battle was basically me fighting him again and again and as long as he doesn't touch me directly, I'm fine. I don't have stamina to dodge. That's annoying. Oh my f- Well, I died. Good thing we respawn at this beacon right here with a flame. So round two. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's dying. Yo, buddy. He's stuck. <laughs> he's stuck. <laughs> Poor guy. It seems the red thing was called a shroud root. And it was the source of our misery. So basically, after destroying the shroud root, all the shrouds surrounding the area would disappear and would make our lives much easier. Also, it gives us uh, skill points. I got an epic axe from the boss fight and I was happy with this. I used all the money I had to upgrade it to the fullest. But yeah, I became broke after upgrading it three times. Oh yeah, and on this day, I could finally make myself a bed. I didn't know there was a recipe for it. So yes sir, we can now have a good night's rest. So I recently just crafted myself a glider. It is so cool flying like this. I feel like a squirrel. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Since I collected a lot of various materials already, I upgraded my shrine to level 2 which enabled me to make two more extra flame altars and also increase my time in the shroud for six minutes it was i guess it would be a lifesaver the extra minute would be good 
and also the additional flame altar is, is gonna be great for some a lot of fast travels in the world so yeah now with the grappling hook on hand i can finally pass through this area and progress through the game okay that was cool but sadly you can only use the grappling hook to interact with stuff like that where there's an existing hook you can't really use it on your own it has to be something that's interactive that's the only sad part if you could i could just grapple everywhere honestly i found this really large tower it is an ancient spire the one on springlands which i currently was so basically these giant towers have puzzles you need to solve inside in order to go to the top which unlock an activated traveling point and on that top it would be really good for gliding making you able to go to various areas just by gliding over also upon solving those puzzles comes with rewards i got a hunter's bow from this i honestly wasn't sure what i was doing here so i just went outside the tower and just circle around and figuring out how i could get up but i was just too blind to actually notice that there was something inside the tower that i could climb on so this was when i realized and puzzles like this you need to look in your environment see if there's any grappling spot or any climbing spot i can go to and i was just dumbfounded that i took so much time going around the tower looking for something to climb on or to at least get on top so yeah after solving a bunch of random puzzles in the tower i managed to get on top now i have an extra teleportation spot i can just go to anywhere whenever i want i made myself a forge on this day and in this forge i can make something called a metal slate which are gonna be needed to, for the next armor set and on my exploration on the new area i found this hidden tomb entry and inside were lots of spiders and booby traps but there are also treasures that i could find this was my first ever encounter of seeing spells in the game it seems spells are like items where you need to equip and you can use it once you've equipped a staff Ooh. so i resumed my journey and found this a village but it was full of scavengers so i didn't want to deal with it currently they were level 9 in this area and i kind of didn't want to fight it when i'm just level 2 so i went on another area of interest where a hunter lives she's currently sealed and i need to wake her up on this location being guarded by some scavengers as well but well it was getting dark so i thought i would just come back the next day and these monsters are pretty new they're like uh walking i guess they're similar to kobolds the next day i went back to finish my task of rescuing the hunter and as i entered the temple it seems there were lots of kobolds just lying around unanimated because these lightning traps i guess they would hurt a lot because <laughs> yeah those two are you know sleeping i have awoken the hunter now i had access to new re recipes like the dried fur noise i went ahead and deployed the hunter checking out what she could help us with our base she was able to craft us some arrows make a drying rack and then also she has an armor set that she can craft it was called the scout set but currently i'm a warrior or a swordsman or a, a viking because i am an axe so yeah i don't really need this at the moment i'm aiming for the iron rising fighter set from the blacksmith i went to another large tower the ancient spire of the low meadows so this was going to be a good fast travel point so i went ahead went in and solved the puzzle grabbed myself an epic level 7 wand along the way and reached the top of the tower i didn't want to show you guys everything that happened inside because as you notice it was morning now it was night it took a really long time and i didn't want to show everything that happened but basically it took me a long time to save the puzzle maybe around 10 to 20 minutes or something next i headed out to where the ancient sanctum of the carpenter was i should have went for the alchemist first but 
This was closer to the tower I just conquered, so I went here instead. But honestly, I think it was a mistake as the monsters here were level 7. They were pretty dang strong and hard. But don't worry, I ran away <laughs> as fast as I could and healed up a bunch and then slowly killed them one by one to emerge victorious in the end. Leave me alone! I still have some mana. I'm seven and a left. Oh. Yes! In your face, buddy. So I repeated this process until I reached the carpenter. So I found a really good leveling spot down here. There were so many bugs. But with my melee weapon, I can strike them twice and they already died. So this was a good spot to level up but I was in a panic state because there were actually just so many and I needed to keep my health up so I won't die and I'm yeah as you can see it's very troublesome in here but good thing we had like a lot of bandage packed so we can just keep healing up and killing these guys. I also encountered a flying undead shooting two air spells I guess homing at that. But yeah, kiting it, hiding behind a rock, using my magic wand, I dealt with it pretty okay I guess. At this point, my pickaxe was actually broken and I had no way of going anywhere in this dungeon. But good thing I had some explosive bombs and I found uh, where the carpenter lies and there was a leech guarding it. But I took care of it easily. I got the carpenter, any addition to our team? I wanted to relocate bases again and I found this really suitable abandoned farming village. So I went there and planted my flame altar. Honestly this place was great. It had so many crops for me to pick like tomatoes and corns and they gave various stats. It's crazy and they respawn every time I relog to the game. So I had an unlimited source of fruits and vegetables and also some honeys there's so many honeys surrounding this area and there's also a church full of monsters that gave scrap metals so i was very happy with this place my new base look we look like a poor knight <laughs> that's good enough i'm happy with this i was finally able to craft two pieces of the rising fighting armor so yeah we look pretty decent now compared to the fur equipment earlier these fields were a good source of plant fiber and also corn i was very happy with this and this was inside the church there were so many undeads here and they dropped metal scraps which was very good because i needed a lot of it to, f to fully make my a rising fighter set and also a metal shield. I also went on a scavenger hunt on this farmer house just beside where I placed my base and I found a treasure. And we got a level 3 rare wand which we don't need. So I'm gonna salvage it. On the abandoned houses, here are some random herbs and tomatoes that are grown by the previous owners, I guess. So yeah, after that house tour, I went to this, I mean, to the location of the alchemist where there were just a level 3 scavengers. Not compared to those shrouded enemies that were level 7. This place was way easier and now we have a better armor compared to what we had when we tried to get the carpenter. So it was a breeze growing through everything here and getting the alchemist. Alchemist Ghetto. There was another area of interest here, a scavenger den that was filled with treasure, says by a log I read. But it was too dark, so I decided to go home and sleep first. There was this chest that made it able so that every item you store on the chest is able to be used as crafting material on benches so I don't need to hold it anymore. This was one of the best items in the game I swear. I love this so much. I, did, I actually don't want to keep getting items from my chest just to craft something. Now I won't need to because I have the magical chest. 
I'm so glad I got the carpenter. Oh my god, this is so uh, such a game changer. Also, with the alchemist, I can now make health potions. And it heals 200 health. And currently, I only have around 240 health, I think. So this was like a real godsend. I can just heal my full HP in just one click. And it doesn't need to drink. It just heals up very fast. I'm so happy with all these new NPCs. Oh and now I also have a new shield. Look at me. We're improving on our gears. Dang, we look so cool now. Next, I went ahead and gathered a lot of scrap metal as I needed them to uh, make my full set of rising fighter gear. If you're wondering how my skill look, I mostly chose the stat points at constitution or endurance. I think that's it. So yeah, I focus mainly on skills that helps me travel faster and regenerate stamina faster than the usual normal skills. So yeah, I went back to that area we didn't go to because it was dark. Now I'm going to go inside this cave. It says in the text what, what I read was there was a hidden treasure inside. So after dealing with them, let's head inside and see what's inside. Look at my ice ball. Oh my god, this archer has multiple shots. It's crazy. Let's see who's the better archer. Me. Oh, I wonder if this responds each time. <gasps> we got a legendary sword! I upgraded it to the map. Never mind. But yeah, <laughs> I use all my money to upgrade my sword. As I was exploring, I saw this glowing stone. It was an ancient obelisk. And upon touching the ancient obelisk, I gained a level. And I don't know why. But I'm happy thank and thankful. I also found this tomb, which I explored. It had a bunch of spiders, but they weren't really a problem with our sword. I could just one-shot most of them. And upon reaching the end, I got myself a legendary frozen core wand, which I was very happy about. Another legendary item in a row. That's crazy. Although it's just level 3 compared to our level 7 epic stuff, I still used it. I stumbled upon a shroud route while I was venturing the mountains. And for some reason, this route doesn't have any guards or anything around here. So it's kind of weird how it's here. But well, it's free experience, uh, free items, and hell, I like slashing routes. <laughs> Goodbye, misery of the world. I also raided this camp with a mine shaft. I like how they how how they were very specific with that. <laughs> yeah, they they weren't a challenge as I was really geared up. And they're just level 3. I already experienced hovers of level 7 monsters. Anyways, I decided to raid this area. The Ferndale, the one I just ignored recently because everything was level 7 and high level. So I decided to come back here again. Everything, honestly, they were so strong. I hate them. I guess I was just bad at combat right now. I'm just slashing, running, healing, attacking, rolling. Oh yeah, let's try luring them one by one so we don't actually die that fast. Shit! 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 <laughs> Good thing we have potions. Oh my god, thank god for potions. Well, after that, I ventured to an enshrouded area. Or a shrouded area. It was another elixir well. And the monsters here were actually level 9. They were pretty strong. But we we can we got this because we have like our level our legendary sword and we can attack in range so we're fine. After running a bit inside, I saw the root and a boss guarding it. He was a big chunky boy, but I decided to lure him with my arrow and go on heights so I can easily take care of him. Find height, find height, find height, find height. Yes, climb, 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 plaster, plaster you. Don't <laughs> oh, go down. Alright, now. So geeky. I used my brains and my brawn, just sniping the boss from afar. And we didn't die, but I did get full damage because I forgot about it. And look, we even got a legendary lightning shepherd staff. 
Woo! I ran for my life as my bar was almost up. And I grabbed this hourglass which regenerated my enshrouded status. So now I had time to actually go for the root. I had to take care of its minions first on the sides, but they were great XP and I don't mind them having spawned in my face. And after taking the random enemies surrounding their roots, I chop it down. And went home to have a good rest. The next day, I went to a tomb called Necropolis. There was a bunch of stuff here, but nothing really important but i hated the fact that you need to open doors with lockpicks but i guess that's why lockpicks exist but i just feel like it's a hassle oh well <laughs> after clearing the tombs puzzle and a bunch of block picking i managed to get a level 9 legendary frozen core wand which is six levels higher than the core wand i got previously so that was pretty nice actually a good a good loot the next day, I went to a new area of interest called the Withered Encampment. There were these uh, flowers shooting poison randomly. So with my staff on hand, I burst them into flames. But yeah, the staff, I can only cast like two magic spells before all my mana runs out. And I hate that fact. So I decided to just whack them with my sword. And I'm not sure what's happening to my head here. But it's covered with poison! Well, that happened. So I came back, grabbed my stuff, and discovered a forest. This forest had level 11 monsters like this plant. But thankfully, we can just kill it in range. Which, we were safe. <laughs> so yeah, this forest had new items. Like a lump of clay we can mine. Some new flowers. Like hibiscus. I, I don't know. It was a uh, indigo plant, I mean. And then strawberries. Strawberries are pretty decent. It can buff you up plus 3 health regeneration for 30 seconds and that's pretty good. 3 health regeneration is pretty high. I decided to place an altar here as this was a good destination to farm some indigo plants and strawberries. Strawberries were actually abundant here. It's like everywhere just encircling this area. I was honestly hopeful that this could be bronze so I can upgrade my gears to bronze gears but it was just a lump of clay. But still, it's something we needed to progress to make a break for new stations. So I made a killin with a lump of clay. I went to the shrouded area in the forest in search for the alchemist tower. And I encountered these level 11 shrouded men. And boy, they were scary. Their damage is very high. I was... Scared for my life. <laughs> Look at that damage, man. Thank god they had more constitutional and defense from my new armor sets. But still, ooh, they hurt. There were more at the lone thistle at the base camp they were at. Maybe about like 10 of them actually. But I tried to deal with them one by one from a distance. And I guess it went well so far since I didn't really had trouble surviving here. I just had my bow and stairs. So I'm happy with this. But amongst the groups of the Shroud, there was this level 15 monster. And he was fast and strong. And oh my god. Good thing that his his fellow Shrouds were slow. I could just outrun him and then try to deal as much damage as I can as I run and hit again and again. And eventually, I dealt with him by trying to practice parrying. Parrying is really nice. It stuns them for a bit, so you can like freely hit the enemy. But once their shield was up, it was kind of hard to break it off. There were also these shroud versions of the flower we encountered in the forest. But they were pretty easy to deal with. I just needed my bow and arrow to kill them. I eventually reached the alchemist tower and I had to look for the alchemist equipment here. It was held on that room down there where I didn't notice at all. <laughs> but good thing this area wasn't that enshrouded. I could regenerate my bar. It honestly took me a while to notice that there was a room down here. <laughs> but it was locked behind the gate. But yeah, the button to push was just above the house. I found it and also behind this door was a chest. And it gave me an archer hat. After going down, I got the Alchemist Mortar. 
I farmed the alchemist tower for a bit and now I had a complete archer set. Not really, it's a mix of a warrior set and an archer set. But mostly it's the helmet of the archer, the armor of an archer, the pants of an archer, but the boots of a warrior. <laughs> I kinda regret uh, salvaging my legendary level 3 weapons in exchange for level 13 weapons. They kinda suck. So I'm gonna go get myself the sword again. But before that, I got sidetracked again and decided to visit the salt mine because it was on my quest. So why not? So I just mined a bunch of salt until I gained like three stacks of it. So then I decided that was enough and continued to venture through the shroud in this area. There were a bunch of monsters here but not as strong as the ones we saw before. They're just level 5 compared to that horrible level 15 monster that was scarily strong. And I found the root here and immediately start chopping it away for some experience and some mastery points. On this day, I went to go on adventure on a place called the Missbury Catacombs. Inside was really huge. It was crawling with monsters. And at the front of us was the gate towards the reward, which would be the tomb of the queen. But this place was, yeah, crawling with monsters. And in order to get to the door, we need to unlock four keys, which actually took me a while because I got lost in this dungeon or catacombs. There were a bunch of hidden stuff like this one where it spawned like the insects. I just needed to destroy this rock or crater or the pod for the insects. And it would lead me to this area, which would lead me then to another area if I did something like exploding a wall or something. But yeah, there were a bunch of puzzles and it was like a maze because I honestly didn't have a sense of direction. But obviously this barrel is for exploding and there was a guard there. But yeah, it was just level 7 I believe. But he was a fast boy. That was a scary boy. <laughs> <laughs> but good thing we're trying to be better at parrying. Look at me in action. <laughs> I was waiting for it to parry but he was not attacking at all. Alright, so the first key done. The second one I had to swing like Spider-Man. But yeah, second key done. And on the underground part, this is where the th third key was at. Which I shot with an arrow because... That was a trap and I feel like if I step on that, I would die instantly because those red things basically drains your enshrouded status from 100 to 0 in like under 2 seconds and you would die. Honestly, it took me a while to find this fourth one. I just didn't notice it that it needed an arrow to be shot. I needed help from our friend YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you want more from this. So yeah, after all of that, I finally managed to open the area where the tomb lies. And what we got was a shield. <laughs> it had plus 25 health, which was good. And it actually glowed. It looked pretty cool. Look at this. It's glowing. It's cool, right? It was worth all... Spending two in-game days, right? So yeah, moving on. I stumbled again on another scavenger's encampment or camp and decided to raid this area. There was actually a boss here called the Scavenger Gorgon... I mean, Gorger Matron. But with a bow in hand, I just tried kiting it because I didn't want to approach it, actually. I was scared. Uh, it's a big boy and I'm kind of scared how much damage it could do. So I just took my time trying to wear it down until it dies. Look, it's poison can't even reach me. So I have nothing to fear. I'll just stay in the stairs till I'm, you know, till I kill him. And we're almost close. I think this is the smartest way of dealing damage to the bosses where it's safe. But as you can see, he's approaching us. <laughs> but we're kind of fine right now, yeah. Just a little bit more and he should fall down. And after we get the helmet, we can upgrade our flame altar to the next level. Meaning more slots for more flame altars. Oh my god, he exploded. 
I went to visit the scavenger stash once more as I wanted the legendary sword. Even if it was level 3, it actually packed a punch at the max level. Like upgrade 5th. So yeah, I came here again to grab the legendary sword as it was uh, very strong. I discovered that the lady that does like uh, the hunter has a small bag recipe so I immediately crafted one and now I had extra inventory slots which makes the a game experience way better. But now I need to figure out how to get a line in. We also had a new friend joining us on the farm. I mean the base. It's the farmer. She had the recipe for food that were really great. Especially this popcorn. I just needed some honey and cord cob and it can buff me with a stamina recharge worth 5 minutes. That's crazy. And also this vegetable puree which add 3 decks and also the chamomile tea which had 5 health generation and 2 endurance for 35 minutes. I just needed to finish some quests before we can get the fireplace recipe. As I journeyed through the forest, I encountered a new type of food called the hazelnut. It gave like plus 3 strength which would be really good for our melee damage. So I had... I was gonna use this instead of the constitution buff which was only plus 1 on our chicken meat. I raided this village full of beast people. And so yeah, it had 2 treasure chests very close by together. So I decided to farm here for a while to get good items. Well, I had enough of collecting items. I wasn't really lucky enough to get some legendary gears. But yeah, I decided to go to my quest now. Currently, I'm distracted here. Because <laughs> there's a giant house. I was thinking there might be something inside. So I decided to pay it a visit first. There was really nothing except for cage dogs not inside their cage. And they're like a threat. Level 11. They're scary. But with our legendary sword, it was not a problem. I went to the roof, as an archer should, and start shooting enemies. But my damage were so bad, I don't know why. I can't even hit. <laughs> I guess I was out of range. But yeah, I don't think this is the way to play this game. My damage is not there, chief. It's just not there. Honestly, this guy, this guy right here with two poison blades. This one is the scariest monster in this game it's so god dang strong it's so god dang persistent and it runs very fast it doesn't run out of energy i hate them so much i just run away most of the time when i see them they're crazy but yeah we're an archer so tough luck buddy this town is too much for me so i'm just gonna run away for now and these god dang boars why are they attacking me and not this other enemies they're not the same they're not allies or anything i hate this <laughs> i am constantly being followed by enemies and i'm dying and they're just they're just annoying there they hate each other now okay and i finally won and live so yeah i changed my class to a ranger i mean i reset my skill i chose like ranger skills see how it goes and immediately I don't see the result. <laughs> what am I doing? Why is my build so bad? Oh! And there we go. Such good damage. One shot the dog. Now my ultimate nemesis. The freaking dual bleeder. And it's still hard as ever even with the ranger class. I have a short bow right now so I can charge very fast. But oh my god this guy is so pretty annoying. Like did you see the multi shot? It's pretty good right? But yeah. This guy's still annoying as ever. I had a little career change because, you know, arrows ran out so fast and it's not really easy to farm them or make them. So I decided to be a warrior instead where we only lose durability, not arrow. And repair is free. Fireball! Fireball! Now I have no arrow. What do I do? It's calling the dogs. Am I fighting it here in the bridge? I'm so dumb. Ugh. No mana. Damn. 
Oh shit, that hurts. It won, it won, it won. Woo! Oh, a hero shield. I guess I am a hero. <coughs> but my other shield looks better because it glows. But well, this shield has a better block. I look like a knight now. That looks nice. Well, venturing in the forest and trying to locate my quest. It, my quest said that the location is below this hole. So I moonwalked and then glided. So I wouldn't die when falling. Inside that cave, there were a lot of wolves. And honestly, I was kind of lost in this cave. I didn't know what to do here. But I guess we'll try locating our quest. The blue lights are pretty. But don't let that fool you. That's not really ores. It's just my cell unit. Since there was copper here, I decided to mine for a bit. I'm just gonna take enough. So... I have something to bring home. <laughs> well, since I got totally lost, I decided to go home for now. But well, I persisted and went back to the hole and finally found the shrouded... The shrouded root. So I'm gonna chop it down and see what we can get from here. Okay. <gasps> a legendary weapon. Is this a two-handed weapon? No, it's a one-handed miss. It's blunt damage though. Dang, that still is legendary. And since I can put my flame altar here, <laughs> you know what that means. I'm gonna farm this. Well, I didn't really get anything good on that cave or underground dungeon. So I went to this nearby village instead, and here I found a underground basement where an alchemist used to live. Actually, I was here for a quest, I guess. I think so. But yeah, it's now a good place to farm. We have like three elixirs on the table we can pick up and two chests that contains equipments, which was good. Also, I found a bunch of goodies in the nearby houses, like the Prayer of Flame scroll. Oh my god, that looks so cool now. Look, I'm a warrior. Well, on my way to my quest, I found a farm full of hazelnut and also boars. This farm is going to be a good source of meat and hazelnut. So I put up a flame out there here. Yeah, I'm not running out of uh, hazelnut and elixirs anytime soon. The epic sword I got is useful inside uh, dark places since it has a glow. Look at this. Pretty neat, right? But this boar is not. Venturing in the forest, I found yet another ancient spire. I'm gonna go solve all the problems and reach the top. Same skits as other towers. They have a bunch of traps or like obstacles you need to clear. Push the buttons and then once you push them all, you get to the next stage. Uh, it's pretty easy to deal with these as I can just double jump off of them which makes life easier. And for the next one, I really hate the parts where you need to locate buttons and shoot it with a bow. They're pretty hard compared to the usual just traps and just you just go through. And sometimes my eyes can't really spot these. So yeah, it was a breeze going... It's not really a breeze. <laughs> it took me a while to clear these uh, towers. But yeah, we got to the top. I got a cool new skill called the jump attack. What I usually do is wear my two-handed weapon and jump attack. Then use my one-hand weapon to finish them off. But sometimes it's not that easy to change weapons. But yeah, it's very strong. It's nice for clearing mobs. I went to this area called the Ring of Rot. And my mission was pretty simple. Just to break the shroud root. These shroud roots, every time you destroy one, gives you one free skill point. Unless it's a well, then it would give you a total of three skill points, I believe. 
And here's the problem with being a melee. I can only deal with leeches with a bow. <laughs> I can't hit it with a melee attack. Let me just add that the towers are an amazing way to travel in this game. Look at me, a flying squirrel going towards my new quest point which is just 600 meters ahead of us. It is another shroud route but it's pretty deep. I can't find where to go. I had to circle to the other side since it was farther than the other side and now I can reach the route. There's really nothing guarding it so I just basically fly over and chop it off. So after I was done with the shroud roots, I went to this uh, VUCA arena where it had the VUCA brawler. It was a pretty big boy but since I was built as a tank, I think I can handle this. I also had life steal on my weapon I believe. Both my maces have a life leech. It's not that big but it's quite good enough and these guys are very annoying. They're healing each other so I gotta deal with them before I fight the VUCA guy can't fight one on one but i got this oh my god it hurts Stronger. I'm tankier. <laughs> he has a alchemist ring. Eh. After that was done, I resume my journey to getting more of these roots so I can get more skill points. Next was the main quest. I was directed here inside a cave which was full of spiders. I had to kill a bunch of spiders before finally getting the quest goal which was to get the hand spindle from the hunter and yeah there were a whole lot of them they're a great xp source and now we got the hand spindle we can return home and put this then we can make ourselves some linen 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 i don't know all right since a linen or linen needed some flax to make i made a lot of seedlings and planted them randomly at base i will harvest them once i come back home from my adventures with enough linen i made myself a medium backpack further expanding my inventory slots oh wait i'm curious what's this i don't have any explosives it is a secret engine. I'm here, brother. You did not notice me, eh? What? Ha! One more. Ha! <laughs> I was kind of lost in this mine, but there was only one thing I needed to do here. Look for the crucible for a smelter. I found it. It was here behind the rubble. Let's go. Crucible, get. While I was heading over to my next quest, I found this giant mushroom monster and what curious what it dropped and what it did. Basically, I think it's spraying poison at me, but no worries, we have our life region, right? But we're dying. It's it's fine. It died and we can heal up. Alright, so let's see what it drops. 
I guess those green stuffs must be the poison sacks. And inside, you got some red mushroom. I guess it's worth for the poison sacks. I'm not sure what they're used for, but it's it's worth. All right, so I found another ancient obelisk. Let's go. Destroyed another shroud root for that juicy skill points. Jump inside a big elixir well hole. Ouch. But we're fine. <laughs> we just need to bandage that. And fought a bunch of shrouded enemies. And shrouded enemies, I guess. With my jumping at night. It's so much fun. Next up, we have this leech that is immune to melee attacks. And I hate it so much. So I had to deal with this with a bow and arrow. And its damage is very painful. But we're fine. And lastly, the root is guarded by two giant spearmen and shrouded monsters. So I had to lure them away. Try to like fight them from an advantage point. Maybe somewhere where I can you know, shoot them with arrows. But bombs work. Not that much, but it works. And oh my god. That they're so scary. I feel like if they hit me together at once, I'm gonna die. And this this is a one leech. That's fairly annoying. Oh my god. Okay. One's almost dead. I'm almost dead. <laughs> Shit! Shit! God damn! No! Round two. Let's fight them again. This time, we'll fight them smarter. Taking height to our advantage. Dealing damage with them. Slowly. As their HP crumbles to zero. Uh -huh. What now, buddies? <laughs> Our usual strategy. Such an epic battle. Alright, it's done. Yeah, let's go. Well, after all that was done, I became a farmer. <laughs> A farmer of a flax. I then went to fly around an area that seems to be another shroud root or maybe an elixir well area. And what the root doing up there? <laughs> I don't know how to go there. <laughs> oh my god, this is annoying. Okay, this should work out well. Oh my god, I'm glad it got full damage. I would have died, honestly. And here we go, the root. You cunning root. Goodbye. Day 49. On this day, I decided to become a wizard like I always wanted. On our first or second day. We now have our magic wand. It's just a level, a low level rare magic wand. But as a start, we also have our wizard hat. See, we're a wizard now. Wizard. And to test out our wizard powers, I raided this enshrouded village. And look how fast I killed that thing. Jesus. My god. I also have the pyromania perk, which increases my damage total to 30%. And mostly I added intelligence on my skills. And oh my god. God, why didn't I become a wizard from the start? It's so powerful. It started weak. That's why I changed to archer and warrior. But now, look at us. Look at where we've gotten. Just, just, just like swinging our staff and they die. No mana cost at all. It's crazy. <laughs> why am I? How am I healing? Ah, every point in intelligence makes me heal. So, what the fuck? Why is mage so OP in this game? That's so unfair. Look, every second I heal 26 HP. That's crazy. Okay, time for our staff. Fireball. Oh my god. 
Fireball. No, blink strike. Blink strike. Blink strike. Oh my god, this is so fun. What the hell? Why did I not become a mage from the start? Okay. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That's a big boy. That's a big no. Ah. He can't reach me. <laughs> too bad. Too bad, buddy. It's too bad. Man, this city is infested with shroud roots. It's such a big city. Oh, what's this? Guard of the North. 4% damage on all, everything. Range, magic, and melee. Dang. <laughs> He's stuck. I don't know why you're stuck, buddy, but too bad. What? A level 15 epic wand. Alright. I like that. Ooh, it's the pants. Plus 8 stamina, but... The shroud time though, but the defense is pretty high, which makes it good. Since I'm starting to get the armor set, I decided to just prioritize all the armor set pieces. So I'm gonna go and look for them. Since their stats are pretty good, aside from a lower time in the shroud. But yes, yeah, pretty good. Now this time, I got the chest plate and it gave plus 160 health. That's so good. Except for the minus on the shroud. But it's okay. We encounter it with the potions. And look. We look so cool now with this armor. Nice. We just need a helmet. Because this wizard hat looks so weird on it. And finally, after a bunch of climbing, I got the helmet. 13% critical chance. And we look so cool. Let's go. Look at us now. We don't actually look like a mage now. But it's fine. We look cool anyways with this armor. Yeah, it seems we have everything except the boots. So I'm gonna look for the one final piece. Well, after we fight the boss here. It's the Fell Wisp Wyvern. Oh. What the heck? Oh. That hurts. Why am I... Not having food right now. Fireball! Oh my god! He has such a big HP! He's a god freaking Zilla! Fireball! Oh. Why did I miss? How? Okay, we have unlimited HP with our regeneration. Oh. We have no mana. A mana leech. My magic is not giving up. <laughs> Fireball. Fireball. Oh my god. Good thing. Our, our, our aura of aqua makes us heal. <laughs> In your face, buddy. And our blink strike deals with the. Fire. Bolto! Oh my god. No matter how high your damage is, you can't beat. What the hell? Why does it hit? Yeah. And like I said, I can don't need to. Okay, we killed it. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, what's this ring? Thirty percent mana and thirty health. Oh my god, that's crazy. Alright, and we got the final set of the Guard of the North set. Plus one health regeneration, plus two stamina regeneration. 
pretty decent. Yeah, the shroud thing's gonna be a problem, but we have a lot of the elixir that increases our shroud time. We're fine. Next, I went on another exploration to deal with shrouded roots since I want more skill points for skills. Well, I found a good uh, farming spot after beating that shrouded root. There was two chests here, golden chest at that. So I started farming it until I was satisfied. I raided a random village and got to level 15. Let's go. I did a quest for the farmer. I needed to look for treasure in this trash can dump. Took a while, but hey, I found it. Look at it. Look, it's treasure. It's gold. I'm stuck in gold right now. <laughs> we got an epic one, but we already have like a legendary one. Alright, look at this. Level 25 elite. Wand. I mean, level 15 wand in action. Look at the damage! I'm, I'm destroying this thing so fast. It was... I feared them before, but now they're easy. Mm -mm, they even gave me a legendary bow. Nice. For the following days, I just went on an elixir well hunt. To destroy all the shroud roots in the world. But actually, I just wanted the juicy experience points. I mean, juicy skill points. That's why I'm here. They are too weak. I, I can't believe I did not see this elixir well when I was lower level. But anyways, looky looky, juicy experience, skill points. I think they give like around 3 skill points per elixir well, which was really good. Well, after all that shenanigan, I finally decided to go to my uh, main quest. Not really main quest, but towards the main quest. Currently, we're at the gates of pillar creation. <laughs> was it? All right, my bad. It was the gate to the pillars of creation. Let's go. Well, at the end of this road, we see like a giant mountain. It's more like a gate to the other side of the world. So we're basically progressing to the story to stronger monsters on the other side of this gate. It had a bunch of traps like this one where we can just double jump. These rolling balls, which we can also just double jump <laughs> or ignore. Anyway, after going to all the puzzles or all the traps, I got to the ancient obelisk and now I got the masonry tool for the carpenter. And once again, and now the new area and greeting us is a VUCA camp. Also, oh, these guys are called the VUCAs. <laughs> oh yeah, they're level 16 right now. Wow. Oh my god. Oh yeah, they're, they're pretty strong now, but we're stronger. Our magic can't be stopped. Look at that damage. It's crazy. There were a lot of new stuff in here and also a lot of new spell I could try out like this light burst. It dealt a pretty decent damage I guess. It had a very fast cast time but yeah my wand was stronger. So I'm not really a fan of the light burst. On opening one of the chests in the Vukas camp, I got a level 18 chest plate and oh my god the armor is already way better than my old one. Hmm. What am I going to do? I guess I should wear the new armor. As I explored deeper into the new area, I went and fight against another VUCA brawler. But this time we have a new spell called the Acid Bite. I wanna try this out and oh my god they hurt so bad. I really need better armor I guess. The acid bite is so strong. Oh my god, acid bite is so strong. <laughs> there were also new animal types here. They're like tigers or lions. I'm not sure. Whee! So yeah, I flew into an area called the Raven's Keep. Inside was a dead VUCA, which provided a level 18 scalper. And wow, cool. But I only had a durability of 150, so I'm not really into wanting to use this or anything it just looks cool because it's a site and after exploring inside i once again had to deal with these very annoying tanky very strong scavenger 
which had poison blades. I hate them. <laughs> no matter what level they are, I hate them forever. I fought another VUCA brawler for a quest. And after it died, I got myself a new axe to use, which was a the Jasmina's Apotheosis. But it didn't last long as I found another better melee weapon. <laughs> but it looks cool. Yeah, as you can see, it looks cool. I went to beat up another root, I mean shrouded root, and I fought, I saw this new kind of boss or shroud monster. It's called the Fell Monstrosity, and he shoots out beams of, I don't know, <laughs> beams of shrouded attacks and a laser beam. Alright, so it's not really that hard of a boss. Oh shit, oh shit. Fireball casting time is so bad. Alright. Let's guide this guy. One is stronger, what the hell? We just need faster casting time. Alright, he's dead. And got the smithing tool for the blacksmith in the Umber Hollow. I got a new hat. This is called the, the Mystic Hat. And it doesn't look as cool as the Guard of the North, but it had a stats that would want me to wear it. Critical chance on magic and, and critical strike. So I'll be wearing it. I've been curious about these mushrooms for a while, so I decided to chop it off. And here I got a mint mushroom meat. I needed this for an altar upgrade. And I didn't know these mushrooms actually were the ones who dropped it. So that's pretty cool. And then I also saw this red giant mushroom, but acid bite killed it in a matter of seconds. We got the ammonia gland here, which is also needed for the altar upgrade. I crafted myself the magician hat as it had higher critical chance and honestly it looked much cooler than this. So yeah, look at me. I look like a magician again. <laughs> <laughs> not like that one. I feel like I look like a musketeer with a mystic hat. I also crafted myself the eternal fireball. It had higher casting time but higher damage than the regular fireball I was using which was fireball 1. It's great. Actually I couldn't. I don't have the alchemist station. I went to this area called the sun rats rest as this was the area where the farmer's quest led me to to get another item so I can further craft more stuff from her. Well, these level 18 enemies were tough, but they were no match for my, for my magic. Oh, they hurt though. <laughs> and my lightning bolt is pretty strong. We reached level 20. 5 more till the max level. You know how my acid bite is really strong? Well, an enemy's acid bite can be the same. <laughs> Well, too bad for this guy. I can jump, climb walls or something. I can just kite him from above. No matter how strong your attacks are, if it doesn't reach, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much. I got a lot of passive skills for my magic. Like multi-shot or something, then releases shockwaves each crit to other enemies surrounding the area. And look how devastating my wand is doing to these monsters. It's crazy. Anyways, I was on my way to this tower. So I have a jumping point or a teleport point, which was free, not the flame altar. It's the ancient spire of the nomad highlands and I reached level 21. Well, after overcoming some obstacles, I reached the top of the tower. I went home after all of that and made myself an oven. Now I can craft new food from the farmer. Nice. I raided Lupa's lair. I'm not sure who Lupa is here, but it's probably this guy. Yeah, I'll be here on the side spraying acid bite him. Acid bite is just so good. I need to make the eternal version of this. And now we got the tanning station. 
Let's go. We can now make leather. And with leather, we can upgrade our bag. And our glider. The problem was, I needed three, I mean five leather. And to make leather, I'll need some dried fur, salt, and ammonia gland. And thankfully, I had some. But I'll need to wait for this to process before I can actually make my bag and glider. So yeah, I took care of a bunch of shroud wood first in the new area or the desert. Look at my new glider in action. It's significantly faster than my old one and it has a, a light, I mean streaking light of violet which looks cooler than previously which had nothing I believe. While I was strolling about, I came into this place called the Cradle of Dusk and there was this fell monstrosity here, the boss again but no worries, with our acid bite look at its HP go from 100 to zero <laughs> and this is where we get our quest item the cradle i mean the black cauldron now we can make the alchemy station now with the alchemy station we can make an antiseptic and a chemical base and also we can craft a bunch of new spell from the alchemist like the eternal fireball let's go as I ventured out to the wilderness, I found a bunch of new stuff, like this cactus right here. But I didn't really give anything new, it's just the same old plant fiber. But I saw this scorpion, which I'd never seen before. It was level 21, and it gave me a scale, which was needed for a new armor set called the Rogue Armor Set. Rogue, heh. <laughs> I'm not using this, I'm a wizard right now. I also got some saffron, some kind of new flowers. And on this part, there was this gate. It's probably the gate to the new part of where we need to progress. So this was a good thing, yeah. So we're gonna put my flame out there here to be safe. Well, as I went on my adventures here, I didn't know that there was something called the Deadly Shroud. And before I could turn back, I was too late and succumbed to my death. I needed to level up my flame out there level first before I could explore there. I needed some tin ore, about 20 pieces, and some more mushroom meat. Mushroom meat was easy, but the tin ore, I'm not sure where to find it. So I gotta look for it, look it up. And by the way, this is the rogue armor set. It has, I think it's legit for assassins or rogues because it has backstabbing damage, opportunity damage, and other stuff that is like for a rogue or ninja. Interesting, but I'm gonna stick with wizard for now. I went on a journey to look for it then, and it actually took me a while until I, I finally got curious and thought, hey, is this tin? And so I started mining away and it was tin. I was so blind. Oh my god, it's tin ore. This is the tin ore I was looking for. I need 20. Or let's actually make more. And with that, I upgraded my altar to level 5. Let's go. Now we have a new set of items to collect. <laughs> Remember the gate earlier? Yes. Uh, that was a sulfur mine. So I got a lot, bunch of new stuff like the sulfur and the sand. I decided to mine the 40 pieces of sulfur now. And just store it at base. And now look, we unlocked the recipe for the eternal acid bite. Nice. I've gotten a new spell and it's called the Shroud Meteor and it's dealt, I don't know, it looks like it's gonna deal crazy amounts of damage but the casting time is kind of poor. But yeah, I found this camp and it contained a lot of new items I didn't have yet or access to like the fabric, red fabric and a bunch of stuff like a clean bandage. Then I also discovered a city called the Brittle Bush. And here was the place where I'm gonna farm a new set of items because there were a lot of chests just lying around in the rooftops here. I found a new shield here as well. I, I saw this chest underground and it contained the shield of light which was higher in terms of blocking power and the parry power than my current shields. So I was using it now. This place was crawling with very strong monsters. And as you know, level 25 is the max level, but not for these monsters. I still saw higher level ones. 
Oh well, yeah, these guys are pretty tanky now. Their damage is crazy. So I needed to have a change in gear. As maybe like level 23 stuff now. Oh yeah, I went to this very curious area. It's called the Sun Temple. And this place was crazy. Like dangerous. Like very scary. <laughs> Monsters here were very strong. And I'm scared. There's a new type of exploding i mean a new type of insect here let me show you hold on just a moment let me just clear all of these monsters just lurking about down here dang <laughs> look how strong they are my hp can't keep up anymore we were op at first but now it's like it's hard to keep up with their damage their dps is getting stronger and stronger as i went deeper on this haunted sun temple I eventually found the tomb area and here lied the fell sickle site and this guy threw like sickles very fast it it, it was very dangerous he, he dealt so much damage i'm kind of scared of facing him but yeah we, we can try anyways i never tried damaging him at this moment so let's see how much damage we can pull him at and if it's big then we can fight this easily if not then we're in trouble Well, I did not know he had a bomb with him. So yeah, let's try fighting him again. Alright, round two. Let's get our items first. Oh my god, the interaction with the... Oh! 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 I fell! Alright, oh my god, yeah. Speaking of the insects... I told you that was new. That was it. It exploded on my face and I died again. Where's my items? Where did I die? Oh my god. Well, at this point, I was very frustrated with the monster <laughs> since I kept dying. He was one of the strongest monsters I've ever fought in this game. I guess you can say he posed a challenge because I can't do what I did for the other monsters where I just took height. Because this time, this guy was flying and he threw magic spells rather than being melee. He was a pretty hard boss. And since I couldn't find my items, I just gave up on it and decided to fight this guy. Okay, this was a battle of attrition with this monster. Currently, his health versus my health, but I have passive regeneration, so we're fine. I'll just need to shield up and try to tickle him as much as possible. And it says ineffective, but I can see it damaging him. Oh, the arrow is pretty good as well, but... Okay. Let's try a different strategy this time. This guy is... I'm scared. I'm just... I'm just... I don't know what to do with this guy. But yeah, slowly, we're getting there. Just so, a few shots, and eventually he'll, he'll die. He'll succumb to his death. Yeah. Shoot, hide. Shoot, hide. <laughs> Shoot, hide. You know in FPS, I forgot what it's called. It's a jiggle peek. But we're, our fireball is actually doing a lot of damage. So let's just charge it up. Fireball! And let's go. We won. Dang. And he only gave us a level 3 frozen core one. Hey, it's pretty decent because it's level 23. Finally, we won. So I gotta look for my item wherever this is. Oh, I saw it. It's up there. Nice. I thought I lost it forever. I had a hard time looking for materials. Good thing I didn't lose it. As for the reward of this dungeon, an epic dawning sun hammer. Hmm. Well, I guess it's alright. I'm not gonna use it though. Oh, I just noticed with a mystic robe and a s sun shield, I look pretty decent now, like an actual wizard. The, the long coat makes it good, and also the shield plays the part, as well as their color schemes. Hehe, <laughs> I'm a wizard with a sword. Oh yeah, in Bittle Bush, I did more farming. Uh, this is the path I took for the two golden chests. So basically, there, and double jump from here to the other side. There was another chest right there as well. But, yep. There you go. So I farmed this for a while until I was satisfied. Oh, 
Oh my god, I got the Ring of Ancients from one of the chests here. That's crazy. I also got a new wand called the Ritual Tempest wand. And it had plus 8 shock damage each time we upgrade this. Which was pretty good. So I had to change my skills from a pyromaniac to someone who focused on lightning instead. Also a legendary bronze sword and a new bow called the Wolf Snarl Longbow. So here's the wand in action. I'm sorry for missing, but look at that damage. And also this is a new monster, a bird. It's the one that drops eggs. Eggs are needed to cook a certain food that gives plus 4 intelligence. So yeah, it's gonna be hard farming these eggs. Would be nice if there was a quicker way. But anyways, we got the eggs. I discovered a new ancient spire called the Kindle Waste. So we have another jumping point in this game now. And we also reach level 24. So I guess discovering ancient spires actually gives a lot of XP because I leveled up most of the time each time I discovered a new one, which was pretty nice. Also, I got this skill, which enabled me to like punch with magic. It, it looks pretty cool, but I hate how I needed to get that skill. I don't really want to go hand to hand, but... Yeah, I had no choice because I needed to go through that skill in order to get a good passive which stuns enemies when my magic crits. Well, same shenanigan as the other towers, a bunch of traps, a bunch of puzzles to solve, and then we reach the top. So yeah, I, I tried the shroud meter on this random armadillo and oh my god. 2.3k damage. It just disappeared and the ground even sunk with it. Like, it's crazy. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. So yeah, I found this area. I think it's called the Rochelle Burrow. And it had a lot of plantations below. I did not need to plant my own saffron as it made its own saffron down there. So I was gonna use this as a farm to take a lot of saffron. Maybe it contained about maybe 15 to 20 saffron i just need to loot everything and also some new plant called i think it was ginger i forgot it's called the grapple plant and i think it added plus five spirit basically spirit adds mana to the game but yeah we don't really think about the mana because i'm more on focus on my wand and i would just use my staff if i had some mana and here it is again, the exploding bug. I hate it so much. It made so it made like killing these bugs much more difficult than before. But anyways, that's my saffron farm right there. So I went inside, I mean I went to this elixir well, and most of the monsters here are already 25. Man, I'm scared. Hopefully it's only a bunch of these low level monsters, not those crazy dual wielding poison blade monsters well we'll find out soon i just went to to the beside the shroud <laughs> shroud shoot and yeah the, the monsters here wasn't that tough it's just the normal slow walking monsters but there were just archers that dealt pretty good damage it wasn't a problem though as we could always just regenerate while it damage oh right 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 the fell monstrosity is here too but you know it's easy to deal with this guy it's just a few pokes or maybe an acid bite would do the trick. But I'll just do a few pokes. <laughs> Our lightning staff is uh, doing wonders. I also got a skill called necromancy. It summons that flying skull. I mean a chance to summon this flying skull. So if I like use a... You know if I use a magic attack. And it seems like the shroud meteor doesn't do anything to this guy. Because this is a shroud monster and it's called a shroud meteor. I guess normally it'd be immune. My bad. Anyways, we got the elixir well. Next, I found this place called the Eldermir Dam Excavation Camp. And boy, let me tell you, this place is amazing. Well, it's not really, but at this point at this moment, I thought it was amazing. Because it's the only place I know that I could farm high level materials from all the scattered objects here you can break. And there's also chests. So yeah, it was a very good place at this moment for me. So I got the scientific instruments the alchemist was looking for. And yeah, speaking of this place, uh, this place gives padding, gives colored fabrics. 
if you open these uh, like those scavenging items where you can interact with I did not know not till much later that padding was actually very hard to make and required a lot of flax so this was a godsend so yeah after talking to the alchemist it seems to make the eternal acid bite i need a laboratory and to make the laboratory i need an athanor we already have the scientific instrument so that's no problem and for the athanor i needed bronze bars and bronze bars are really hard to make you need a lot of copper and tin bar it's not hard but it's you know time consumer so i decided to just farm copper bars and i know the perfect place well i, I honestly forgot about the laboratory thing oh well, yeah i went on doing a lot of various quests and now i discovered another sun temple to do so this place was also a good farming spot i discovered down here which doesn't require any we actually require a lock pick but not so much but still, it's a good place this place didn't have that crazy boss as we fought last time but still it was a still the sun temples are pretty hard to beat for this sun temple i couldn't really find anything interesting aside from this chess but yeah we already have a better staff right now so it wasn't i did not explore much further as i think this was the last bit of it wait i was wrong yeah that was the last bit of it there was nothing else this temple provided us with after getting inside here um yeah there's nothing here I, I killed all of the monsters it's the same mechanic as the previous sun temples level 25 monsters but well it was an adventure anyways for the next few quest areas i couldn't go there until i upgraded my flame to the max level which was level six so i came to this mine to get some iron ores i needed about 40 of them but i'll get some extra for equipments so yeah, it's gonna be a bunch of material gathering for the next few days. So on the blacksmith, we unlock a bunch of new armor set. The soldier, the warden, and yeah, we have already talked about the rogue set. But the warden set looks promising, but I don't really parry that much. As for the soldier set, it's more on a melee emphasis. So I don't really use my melee weapon that much. So I wasn't that interested. But the bonus physical armor and health made me want to actually just make the armor. <laughs> Mix it with my wizard set. So this? Oh, yucca fruit. This is the one that makes yucca fruit. Oh, I need a lot of this. So yeah, with this yucca fruit, I was almost close to upgrading my altar. I just needed to farm a lot of sparks, about 40 of them, so I can upgrade it. So yeah, I raided this area to for a quest. It's 166 meters just ahead. And we meet again, Mr. Guy with the poison blade. And I hate him so much. Look at his damage, even with my new gears and stuff. Oh my god. My casting time for the acid bite, the, the eternal acid bite, takes quite a while. But look at the damage though, it's worth the casting time. So for this guy, I'm just gonna use my wand. It's very hard to like shake off, I hate it. <laughs> I'm not honestly sure what the quest is leading me to, but I managed to fight this giant boss again, the Matriarch. The chain, the, lightning, the lightning channel is one of my favorite spells, but there's no eternal version or I haven't discovered it yet. I would love to have one or just even just chain lightning because I would like to mod on all the, you know, all the mobs with lightning. But right now, let's be happy with what we have. I got a uh, Gloom Monarch Trousers. It looks pretty decent. 18 stamina with 2 health regeneration with a lot of armor. But hmm. Well, I look good already now. There was only one more material we need to look for in order to go to the new area and it's the lapis lazuli. I didn't know but these bats are signs that there's lapis in your eye or I'm just I don't know I just got lucky that there are bats here. So yeah I was curious on this rock why it was blue so I tried mining it. Lightning bats. Oh it is lapis. Okay. So I was right. Cause it looks blue. So yeah, I mined a bunch of them until I got around 
40 uh, or my pickaxe bro and yeah my pickaxe broke it didn't manage to get 40 but we got 38 that was good enough so yeah the alchemist had a new armor set it could craft with us after unlocking the lapis lazuli we can make the sage head wrap the archmage set or the warlock set i chose the warlock set because the stats was pretty decent like one damage one damage and even more one damage so it was pretty good but as you can see the helmet already tells us a sign that it would look ugly. <laughs> it looks so... I don't like it. I I want the wizard hat back. I should have gone for the Archmage hat. So yeah, after I gathered enough spark and lapis lazuli, I upgraded my altar to the next level. Strengthen the flame. Okay. Okay, so I maxed out my flame can't increase it anymore so yeah i continued with my quest and fought another uh, vuka brawler with our eternal acid by it it's dead <laughs> the acid is too strong and we got the beehive smoker now we can make honey at beehive oh yeah looking at my map i only had a few quests left to do the these four question marks the greatest game among the blue jay the sun temple and other stuff so yeah we're almost done with this game so yeah when i step at this new area with the higher level shroud or max level shroud these guys were level 30. i was kind of scared of this but well our magic wand is dealing good enough damage so there was no problem here and look at my acid bite <laughs> it's just killing them but oh my god it's this guy but now it's level 30 i hate this thing it's okay it's okay acid bite will do the trick not really he's kind of immune to that poison man but still he's dying right and he's dead he got poisoned to death and the dragon just got annihilated and we're here we have the level 30 version of the matriarch i was feeling pretty confident yeah and he died but i forgot it explodes and I died. Nar. Well anyways, I went to pick up my items and went in, in the sun temple. There were a lot of, uh, you know, things to hit to unlock the door. The puzzle things as usual. So basically, it's just in the behind of the temple. And the one should be on front of the gate. I mean back of the gate. But I did not notice for a while. And there it is. I'm not sure but I think I did not notice anything inside the Sun Temple. So I went to East Lapis again to look for the Weaver's Cottage so I can get the, ma the item the hunter needed so I can make fabric and padded armor. So yeah, the, ta the Sun Temple actually held like the legendary or a very good glider but I totally ignored it. So I'm gonna go back later. Oh my god, the quest to find this uh, weaver's cottage just was pretty hard. It doesn't show on the map where it is. Actually, it suddenly disappears when you're far from East Lapis. I kind of hate that, but it's fine. I guess we'll just explore more of the area. After like getting here, it suddenly showed me where the quest location is, which was very good because now I know where it is. It's actually just below me. I can see it and how far it is below me so i started my way down to get it and in the basement finally i got the loom now we can make fabric padded armor and other stuff that is required on high level armor this thing is actually a grind it required like five linen to make one fabric and four fabric to make one padded armor and that's a lot like a lot lot and I didn't want to grind, but I knew a good spot that gave padded armor and some fabrics. It was here at, not that, on the other side. The Eldermere Dam Camp. So I grinded here for a bit. Yeah, the items here are pretty random. So I just pick up a bunch of stuff. And hopefully I could get the padded armor, the fabric we need, which was the yellow fabric for the warlock set or the mage hat in general. And also, normal fabrics are fine. We can convert them to a colored fabric or even a padded armor. So yeah, I went on in this place until I got the full warlock set. Well, not really. I uh, The 100 days was almost up. So I wanted to finish everything I need to do first. 
which was going through this freaking uh, like bridge to the other side but every time i do fly i keep getting stuck here at like you know the red floor which kills you so i was stuck here for a while so i just decided to walk it off slow towards an area called a zephyr and <laughs> yet i still fell <laughs> dang yeah, let's get back our item and actually find a way to the other side. Old fashioned way would be to walk to the road until we find another area of interest. So that's what I did. But sometimes I took a shortcut. And finally, we found a place that is on the other side. It was another desert area. I wanted to play, put a flame altar here so I can come back anytime I want easily. So yeah, in this place, I found another camp of scavengers level 30 scavengers and the dogs look at the dog he can almost bite me just twice and i'm dead i need to maintain my distance and make sure i don't get hit a lot with these monsters even if i regenerate a lot it can't keep up with the dps anymore we're pretty weak now because these guys are too overpowered like level 30 but i'm also overpowered in terms of damage just not the defense but well my most hated enemy i always feel happy when you're down oh yeah here's the matriarch again so we're just gonna do a very chilling experience of acid biting his face all right i'm gonna highlight this fight since this is gonna be one of my few fights left before we end the video we're almost at day 100 but i'll make sure to make the entire arc mage set even if we go over day 100 <laughs> i just want to see the arc mage set <laughs> Oh my god, he acid bited my face. Round 2, fight! Look, my acid bite with my passive is dealing critical lightning damage while also doing like the normal damage. Anyways, I have two wands. Uh, my lightning staff doesn't really regenerate mana, it's more on damage. But my fire wand can mana leak, which was good. So now let me just turn off fireball this guy to death because I'm scared to get near. He's gonna breathe fire in my face again. I mean, breathe acid. And so we got him. Let's see what he drops. Our loot first. Ooh, a frozen core level 25 legendary one. Let's go. But it seems like the maximum damage an item can have on this game is 47 for the weapons. For two handed, I think it's higher. As for bows, I'm not too sure. Alright, so there was one last point of interest left for us in this game. We've unlocked every single thing already and achieved a lot. Well, except for that one obelisk I can't reach for some reason. But yeah, we have unlocked all almost everything. Just this one sum temple and I'm done. And also the other sum temple I've forgotten because I wanted to farm something else. And since we had some materials, I could make the Warlock shirt. And look how bad this looks. <laughs> I'm so sad. Why did I choose this set? It's because of the wand damage. But I mean, it's not that bad, but I don't prefer it. So yeah, this is the last Sun Temple of Interest. It has a very nice, you know, pathway to it. It looks pretty epic. I was expecting an epic battle here. But it was just more puzzles. There was no monsters here. I mean, there were monsters, but no strong monsters. Like, strong, strong boss type. It was just a bunch of level 30 undead monsters, which were fairly easy to beat. Oh, wow. Look, a puzzle. However, shall we solve this? What if I jump, jump, glide, and updraft? Wow, I'm so smart. I solve it. Not the way it wanted. And honestly, I discovered this This one is also a puzzle where I had to jump to the other side. But instead, I solved it not the way it intended again. <laughs> Just the double jump glide and updraft. So yeah, I activated the last uh, button. But I buffed up first thinking there might be a boss here. But it was just a button. I was disappointed once more. I got chess. We had a poison arrow. Amazing. And the reward for all that effort? We'll find out. Da ding, da ding, da ding. It's a great mace that is rare. I'm so happy. Ooh. And honestly, with that, we completed all the things we needed to do 
in Enshrouded. I still have a bunch of quests. I didn't know where this exclamation point was putting me to. It seems it was a low level area, but I think it's the bug. Because the legendary glider I know is on the other sun temple. But yeah, we're gonna get it. Let's get that last glider and then we can end this. But we need to farm the Archmage head. I want to have a cool thumbnail after all. I farmed a bit and look. <laughs> that looks nice. Right? Except the armor. It just doesn't suit it well. I gotta farm more. So yeah, I think this was more than day 100, honestly. I farmed for maybe two days. I think it's about day 102 now. <laughs> or it looks way cooler than the armor we had earlier. Look at this. Just look at this. We're an actual high level looking wizard right now with a glowing shield. The shield is low level though, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it looks nice, right? C, C, C. So yeah, uh, here's a little bonus. The Sun Temple I forgot. So let me show you. Let's get the glider actually ignored. It was it was just here. Good thing I have a altar here. I can just teleport here without a care. There's no more monsters guarding the area. So three of the things here. We open the gate. But we gotta clear this dungeon once more. There'll be a lot of monsters lurking here. Fine. Oh, these things have tombs. Deep root axe. Oh, I feel like I could farm this area for items. But anyways, let's proceed with our goal of getting the glider. What's this? Oh, it's a giveaway. Oh, it's a <laughs> Oh, it's traps. Hidden. Alright, so activate the thing. Oh, here. Was that enough? Oh no, there's four of them. Oh, here. Alright. Then the last one... Hmm... Maybe it's outside, I just... Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so we can unlock the door. It was on the other side. But yeah, we unlock the door. Now, we can get up. Stop crying. Here's your lightning. You think I had a lockpick? Oh my god, I thought I left it somewhere. Alright, I have a better shield. What am I using? It just looks better for the thumbnail. <laughs> but, yeah. Let's get the glider real quick. We got the ghost glider. How big of a difference is this? Oh, it's not that big, but it's a lot. Alright, let's try this big boy a chance. Where, where do we go? Is it safe to go straight? It is. But I don't want to go there. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for watching our 100 day or 103 day video of Enshrouded. We recently reached 1000 subscribers and also got partner from YouTube. So thank you. Thank you for everyone who found the channel, tuned in, watched our vid watch the video. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this enshrouded 103 day journey. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. This is Rogue. Peace out. <laughs>